All right, welcome back, everyone, for our final game of the night. I, of course, am Niz. You're watching Nizcast. We're also watching the Ten Dota 2 Canada remaining. Cup. We're in the group stages. And this is our first night of the group stages. We're Five Group A. Remaining. We've already had three games. We had, uh, first off, to start the night, we had Summoner's Reserve Rift against time. Pain Gaming, which Summoner's Rift took that one. Then our second game was Leviathan versus Pain Gaming, which Leviathan took. And then we had Leviathan against Summoner's Rift, which Summoner's Rift took. So that leaves Leviathan at 1-1, one one, Summoner's Rift at 2-0, and, oh, and Pain Gaming at 0-2. Oh Isaris, the only team in the group to have not played a game yet. So this is going to be their first game of, uh, well, of the tournament, and uh, they're actually going to be in the rest of our games for the group stages. Of course, we've got two more games scheduled for tomorrow night, and Isaris will be in both of those, as of course they have to play Pain Gaming and Summoner's Rift. But a little bit about Dota 2 Canada Cup. First of all, there's a ticket in game. You can buy it uh, for $8.99, and 12.5% uh, of that ticket price goes towards increasing the prize pool. We're already up at $11,258. So, uh, well, Summoner's Rift looking to, uh, to take that back as they won last time around. But, uh, well, they've, uh, they've got quite a... Quite a list of formidable opponents to go through. And uh, well, we've got two of them in this game tonight. Um, but what else do you get with that ticket? You get a Sven set, a custom Sven set, which is pretty awesome. I have to say it's not as awesome as the courier that you got for Season 4. Bears, Berserky, or Bearski, or whatever the heck his name is, is awesome. It's a little little bear that uh, has a hockey stick. and Well, I'm Canadian, so... Ten I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, remaining. I'm gonna like something with a hockey stick. <laughs> but uh, we Five have seconds remaining. Leviathan going really deep into their. What the heck? Radiant team pick. What is going on? Neither team's reserve times. I actually have no idea what's going on. So we're just going to sit here for a second <laughs> and hope that this fixes itself. But uh, I'll continue to, to talk about the teams and, and, and the tournament and all that. So basically what happens with the group stage is all the teams Ten play each other once. Remaining. Top two teams in the group. Every, sorry, everything's best Five of one. And top two teams in the group advance to the playoffs. Bottom two, they're gone. They're out of the tournament. That's it for them. Dire so, team pick. well, it's going to be really important to... Uh, to get as many wins as you can in this uh, kind of round robin stage in the group. Of course, we have four groups, each group having four teams. And we've got 16 teams, and well, we're going to go down to eight for the playoffs, and then the best of three start until we eventually get to the grand finals where it's going to be a best of five. But these teams have to Ten get there. Seconds remaining. And Five seconds remaining. I, I really don't know what's going on right now, but uh, we do have a Konka first pick, which is certainly unusual, and now a Doom. Dire is this team like... Pick. Okay, it's been rehosted. Uh, this one? That's weird, because it didn't say that everyone was DC'd, but... Oh well, we'll load into this one, and hopefully... We're in the right game and we don't have to switch. Dire team pick. No, nope, we're in the wrong one. Damn it. <laughs> we'll try this one. It looks like they switched sides, so they must have loaded in and realized that uh, one of them was... Uh, well, I think we had a Leviathan there Radiant on the dire team side. Ban. So uh, they realized time. that uh, they were on the wrong side, so switch that up. But anyways, now we should be in the right game, I think. I hope. As, uh, yeah, the picks and the bands are, are going through now. But, uh, yeah, so we've got Isaris, an Argentinian team. I believe they're our only Argentinian team in the tournament. As uh, Well, this is called the Canada Cup, but it's not exclusive to Canadian teams. It's actually a lot more similar to, uh, well, I guess people outside of Canada Ten probably don't know too much about remaining. it. But... Uh, Canada Cup, which was a, a, a hockey tournament back Five in, uh, I believe it started mid-70s and ended in the early 90s. And it Reserve was a, a, a 
tournament hosted by Canada, but it was an international tournament. Oh, and that's pretty much what this is, um, except it's pretty much battle. restricted, I believe, to North America and South Radiant America, so it's not entirely pick. international. But we've got Isaris coming from Argentina, and they're going up against Dia Leviathan, which is pick. a North American-based team. Uh, I believe there are four Americans and one Canadian, I think. But either way, they're uh, they're all living together in a house in uh, in Florida. They got a team house together, and all moved in together fairly recently. Can't remember how how far back, but only just maybe a couple months. But uh, yeah, they've uh, they've been getting quite a bit better by uh, kind of remaining. just kind of living together and practicing together and. Just getting better and better. Five seconds remaining. And uh, that's good to see coming out of the North American scene and coming out of the Americas uh, together because we definitely need to uh, to have Dire teams taking team it seriously pick. and Queen work towards improving. Because, uh, well, right now we kind of just have EG. <laughs> and I guess Team Tinker, but uh, we don't really have too many teams at the, the forefront right now. So uh, we've got to kind of build that foundation and tournaments like this are definitely... A right step, a good step in the right direction. But uh, let's catch up with the draft here. We've got Batrider and Troll were banned out by Isaris. Axe and Chen were banned out by Leviathan. Leviathan then picked up remaining. Storm Spirit first overall. Isaris then responded with Five Lion and Queen remaining. of Pain. Now, Leviathan, what are they going to do? Reserve time. They're going to go with the Wisp. Hmm. Radiant Team Ban. I don't think I've seen them play Wisp. It definitely fits their playstyle. Definitely would fit their playstyle. But I can't say that I've I've seen them play it recently. Interesting. Ten seconds remaining. Isaris, they haven't really had too many remaining. games recently to kind of gauge, you know, what they're capable of. Of their games recently, Reserve you know, they time. Uh, in that in the SA, the South America Challenge. Um, recently, they 2 0 Battle Zone. Um, but prior to that, they lost 2 nothing to Pain. Um, and they unfortunately drew Team Tinker in uh, the Summit Qualifier. So they got 2 0 by them as well. Prior to that, they 2 1 Union Gaming. So they've been doing okay. But uh, unfortunately, they've kind of had a string of losses there. Um, well, I guess, I guess they started with 2 0 over Battle Zone. As for last Canada Cup, they unfortunately finished last in their group, didn't win a single game. They Dire finished 0-3. and three. So they're going to look to improve on their performance of last uh, last season. And uh, they're going to start it off here with, uh, with a game against Leviathan. Like I said, we've got two more Ten games coming remaining. from Isaris to, to round out our, uh, our group stage. Five seconds as uh, both remaining. those are going to be coming tomorrow starting... At uh, 8.30, I believe, where uh, they're going to play against Pain, and then uh, they're going to follow that up with a game against Radiant Summoner's Rift. Team ban. But we get Tiny getting banned out, as well as a Treant Protector getting banned from Leviathan, or by Leviathan, I should say. Ten seconds uh, remaining. Egg asking, uh, where in Florida? I don't know, man. I don't know Five exactly where in Florida, remaining. but uh, they did move into a team house in Florida. That's all I know. You can ask them on Twitter. They're uh, pretty active on Reserve their Twitter time. accounts. I mean, you can see in game they all have their own Twitter accounts, and uh, it just looks so organized. It's good to see. But uh, then the team also has a Twitter account too. I believe that's at Leviathan Dota. I don't even know. I can check right now. I didn't even send out my tweet. <sighs> Mistakes were made. Dire team ban. Dire team pick. Where are they here? Gotta find it for you. At Leviathan Dota, yeah. I'll quickly send out a tweet here, just uh, Leviathan verse. There you go, just send, uh, send out that tweet real quick. Sorry about that, Ten a little disorganized remaining. despite the weight, but we have Night Stalker and Earthshaker banned Five out here. These remaining. teams have been drafting very, very slowly. Reserve time. Surprisingly, Isaris now is just going into their reserve time, so most of, the, most of the time spent in the draft has actually been from Leviathan as they've... Uh, 
Well, they've been eating up most of their reserve time. We saw them get into, I don't want to say a little bit of trouble in terms of reserve time and pick time against Summoner's Rift, but they did have the, the kind of pressure applied to them with a uh, hero kind of picking, picking a little quickly after Leviathan maybe struggled with the decision. But now Isaris is maybe struggling with the decision here as well. They've already got the line in the Queen of Pain. Uh, Queen of Pain's been run a lot of different ways. Most likely she's going to be run in either the mid lane or the off lane. Um, if I mean you can just put the Queen of Pain in the mid lane then you're gonna be a little bit ahead in that lane as Queen of Pain typically wins that matchup. It's not as drastic as it once was but um, I mean it's not that bad and definitely something they may look to go with. Um, that means you also have the Lion to also CC the Storm Spirit when he jumps in. Of course, Hex being instant is great at disabling a Storm Spirit, but you're also kind of vulnerable to a Storm jumping in. So you're going to look for a hero like Queen of Pain to get a, um, an Orchid up quickly to lock down that Storm and kind of assist a hero like Lion. Of course, if Storm Spirit jumps on another target, then Lion would be able to CC. Isris is going to go with the Centaur War Runner. So that's going to be their offlaner. And it's a good, strong, tanky uh, hero that will be pretty resilient against the, the Wisp or, or the Io uh, relocate Ten ganks. However, Stampede also will give that max move Five speed to his remaining. allies as well. So he can pop that in, re in response to a relocate and help Reserve his teammates time. escape. So great pickup going up against the Wisp. Now Leviathan will uh, make a decision here on what they're going to pick with. Once again, going into their reserve time. Leviathan, a team that drafts some pretty weird stuff. But uh, I'm not sure if we're going to see that here. They've been drafting a lot of um, like morph safe remain. lane. Um, stuff like that. Of course, they always put Jenkins on something. I shouldn't say always, but they frequently put uh, Jenkins on some weird heroes in the offlane. But it is going to be a Witch Doctor. That's pretty pretty normal. And uh, we saw a Demon land a ridiculous Death Ward in uh, our first match of the night. As uh, he had just picked up an Egg Scepter, drops down the Death Ward, gets a triple kill. And oh my goodness, it was huge. So big play coming up from uh, Demon. We'll look and see if uh, Leviathan's able to do Ten the same thing with remaining. the Witch Doctor. I'm not sure who's going to be playing it between uh, New Sham and remaining. Flying Zebra. I'm not sure which one would be playing the Wisp. And that's pretty much going to be the deciding factor on who would play the Witch Doctor. But they do have their two supports, and now Isaris will pick up their second support Radiant as they pick, pick up an Ogre Magi to go up with or to pair with the Lion. And that's going to give them a lot of disable. It's also going to give them a lot of potential roaming and putting some pressure on the Storm Spirit early on. And Leviathan's going to go with the Chaos Knight to go with the Wisp. So they're going to look for the Chaos Knight Wisp TPs. I believe it was, um, yeah, it was Burning that played Chaos Knight fairly recently in the Chinese scene. And he wasn't, I mean, typically you see Chaos Ten Knight as a hero that's really strong early on and kind of roam around and just kind of get kills, but Five seconds they actually remaining. farmed it up. Go figure, burning farming, right? But um, yeah, they farmed it up a little bit and didn't, Reserve he didn't rush time. to go after a, an armlet and then go fight. He, uh, he sat around and farmed a little bit longer and just kind of skipped um, picking up Ten that armlet and decided remaining. to go with something a little bit more uh, late game and, and it kind of worked out for him. Dire we're, team pick. We're gonna have to see how they uh, how Leviathan chooses to run this Chaos Knight. As there's really not that many squishy targets for the Chaos Knight early on. His last two bands came out pretty quickly. This is Spirit Breaker getting banned out by Isaris, and now Medusa got banned out by Leviathan. So recognizing the fact that Medusa would be very, very difficult for them to bring down. But uh, Isaris banning out the Spirit Breaker, and Ten I'm not seconds remaining. I'm not too sure why. I mean, Five I don't think I've remaining. ever seen Jenkins play the Spirit Breaker as when they do Reserve pick it, and they do time. pick it fairly often, it's it's Five played in a support remaining. role for the most part. Um, the Spirit Breaker Jesus would line up quite well with the Wisp Relocate ganks as well Radiant as with the Storm Spirit Ball pick. jumping on in. 
Um, so it would be a strong pick for them. I just don't think it's really a pick that they would have typically gone with. Isris went with the Faceless Void, so it is going to give them a little bit more lockdown to deal with the Storm Spirit. And uh, some lockdown to deal with the Chaos Knight, but he's pretty damn tanky. Leviathan's going to go with the Clockwork for Jenkins. And that's going to give us our, uh, our full lineup here. As we're going to hop on into this one in just a second as our last game of the night. As I said earlier, we do have two more games coming tomorrow night. So uh, definitely tune in for that. And I'll drop the, the link in chat where you can go check out the schedule. Never mind, Nightbot's dead. <laughs> He's not going to give us a schedule. Never mind. Nightbot asleep at the wheel. He's not actually in my viewer list right now. Oh, well. Just waiting on Shredder to pick that Chaos Knight. And there we go. We're in the game. And uh, let's introduce the teams and the players on the Radiant side. Unfortunately, we got to pause. <laughs> oh, we got a G immediately. All right, cool. So on the Radiant side, we got Team Leviathan. They're currently 1-1 one one in uh, the tournament thus far as they look to, to go 2-1 and one and put themselves in a pretty damn good spot moving forward. But uh, we've got Flying Zebra uh, playing the Witch Doctor. We've got Shibby on the Storm Spirit, which surprisingly isn't going mid. Okay, so they're going to go with New Sham on the Wisp, Jenkins on the Clockwork, and in the mid lane, it's going to be Shredder on the Chaos Knight. For our dire side, which has moved, all of them moved together down into this Radiant Jungle, we've got Isaris Gaming. We've got Fullback, who's going to be on the Lion. Papita, who's going to be on the Faceless Void. DDX is going to be on the Queen of Pain. Dolce Mania is going to be on the Centaur War Runner. And Nildara. Or Nidara? Nidara? Nidara. It's going to be playing the Ogre Magi. I could have sworn he had an L in his name before. Maybe he's just messing with me. <laughs> we got Boots First on the line and the Centaur. No birds f Boots First for anyone on the Leviathan side. But uh, we do have a set of sentries purchased by Isaris as well. And they're going to use those to, to block up the some of these begins. camps. So uh, that's not available to... Uh, Worthy to tribute. Leviathan to be uh, to do any pulling. This Observer Ward, quite uh, interesting to point out. It does spot the... Uh, bottom rune, but it also blocks this camp from spawning. So choosing to go with that. And it looks like Centaur is going to steal the creep wave here. Uh, he's going to pull it completely away. And uh, we'll actually take a look at what we've got in terms of lanes. It's going to be Centaur going up against the Storm Spirit, and Flying Zebra is actually going to rotate down with the Witch Doctor. So it looks like it's going to be Storm Spirit and Witch Doctor going up against that Centaur. Mid lane is going to be Wisp and Chaos Knight going up against the Queen of Pain. And that leaves our top lane to be a Clockwork. And uh, Clockwork going up against the Ogre, Lion, and Void. As Jenkins going to take a little bit of harass damage here. And actually a lot of harass damage as he... Uh, well, he went all the way down to 200 HP. But... Uh, I think he realized there that he was going to have to use his healing salve, so he said, you know what, this thing's going to heal me for 400, so I can drop down a little bit lower. Stay They've already used face. their CC, so they're not going to be able to lock me down. So he just he just stuck around a little bit later for a little bit of XP and, and to try to get a last hit. Don't think he ended up getting it, as, uh, no, he didn't. Well, Jenkins may be in a little bit of trouble in the top lane. We'll throw down the cogs, and it'll trap the void in with him. But he's got Battery Assault popped right now, so it will get a little bit of return damage. Unfortunately for Jenkins, it will cost him a little bit more of his regen. And it's going to cause Void some regen, but Void starting with 8 Tangos, which is a lot. And that's typically what you expect coming out from, uh, from a safe laner that's kind of expects to be left alone quite a bit. Or uh, is expecting to be doing a lot of tanking of the creeps and uh, tanking uh, the creep wave before... Um, before the tower, the tier 1 tower. But unfortunately we will have a pause here. It looks like uh, there's just someone at the door or whatever. Um, 
But uh, yeah, we will just be paused up for a little bit here. But it's interesting that he that he chose to start with that many tangos. And typically what you want is, if you're an offlaner, it's fine to trade a little bit of your regen for a little bit of the supports regen, because then you can start bullying in the lane. But when you're trading kind of with the uh, with the carry, it's not, not necessarily the best, especially when they start with that many uh, tangos. Well, let's take a look at how our lanes are going right now. Queen of Pain doing surprisingly well. 9 and 2 CS right now. And the Chaos Knight at 6 and 0. So a little bit behind the Queen of Pain, but uh, it allows them to, to get control of these runes, or at least it should, because they're going to have a Wisp that's going to be able to go and take the runes, and we're going to have a Witch Doctor that's going to be able to move away from bottom because it's a storm against the Centaur. But... As we can see right now, Isaris has actually put themselves in a pretty uh, pretty good spot to take these runes. As Dolce Mania looks like he's going to be able to secure bottom rune. Don't think Flying Zebra is going to be able to walk in there and take that from him. And on top of that, we've got Fullback standing on top of top rune as well. As uh, Nusham is just sitting in the mid lane right now with Shredder. So looks like Leviathan's going to get neither rune at the two minute mark. And uh, unfortunately, we're still just paused here for a little bit. I'm actually going to, to mute my mic here for, for a bit here and uh, just throw on some music because I don't know how long this is going to be. It shouldn't be too long, but I need to rest my voice if I expect to be able to cast the rest of this game and the rest of the, the week. So uh, just stick with us for a bit. We are back as my mouse is doing really weird things. What's going on? Okay, it looks like we're okay. <laughs> but uh, we did resume, and, uh, well, Isaris did get both those runes. <laughs> as Dolce Mania got an illusion, and that stunned him up because he got too close to the centaur with the three of them. And he got stunned, and that actually allowed Flying Zebra to get the last hit on the centaur there. So getting a little bit of gold doesn't seem like much, but a little bit go can go a long way for that early, uh, early gold. On a support, DDX losing a little bit of HP, but uh, Shredder not able to uh, to lock down DDX as he had already used his stun to uh, to get in that position. Jenkins taking quite a beating here and looks like he's going to go down, but it's not going to be our first blood. The first blood was actually in the mid lane as Nusham managed to get the kill onto DDX before Pepito was able to get the kill onto Jenkins. Dolce Mania was making rotation coming in from behind, but he just wasn't there fast enough to help up help out DDX as uh, he unfortunately took a fall and was first blood for Leviathan. Well, we're going to have uh, a smoke getting purchased by the Centaur War Runner. He does have enough to finish his Tranquils as well, so next time the Courier flies out to him, he'll, uh, he'll have both those. Jenkins playing a little bit too aggressive here maybe as he's going to get stunned up, but get, getting a lot of damage in on the Ogre Magi but also taking a lot as fullbacks just kind of chasing them down and just throwing uh, throwing those right clicks on off them. New Shaman Shredder. How, uh, well, narrowed the gap a little bit as CK is still just two CS attack. behind the Queen of Pain, so getting closer. And once again, four minute rune is about to spawn and Isaris is all over this. Looks like they've got top rune secured and 
Bottom Maroon, oh, oh Dolce Mania may be walking into a bad position. This time Flying Zebra is there in time. He will get stunned up by Dolce Mania from the stomp, but it looks like he's going to go down. Meanwhile, on the top Maroon, looks like Leviathan tried to contest it. Shredder and Nusham going in, trying to battle 2v3, but that's a double damage Queen of Pain. She's going to blink forward and get the kill onto Shredder. I'm sorry. So maybe a little ill-advised uh, contest for the top rune there coming up from Leviathan as Isris was clearly attack. in a position to take it and the fact that it was a DD just meant that TDX was, uh, was able to get the kill there. Well, when uh, sometimes you, you get an advantage in one place on the map and unfortunately that means you're giving up a little bit somewhere else on the map and we saw just an example of that as Leviathan got that kill on the centaur but unfortunately lost their Chaos Knight. And honestly if we had to measure those up against each other I'd have to say that that's going to be advantage Isaris as uh, the CK is probably uh, more important how important he's or uh, how vital his early farm is. And Jenkins really been struggling up here hasn't really been able to get much. He has been able to get the XP and that's probably the most important part as uh, he is slightly ahead of the centaur in terms of XP but not by a significant portion. Um, he does have significantly less when it comes to last hits so he's got less gold but it's not that bad. We, uh, we do have the storm spirit so Shibby just finishing his treads from the side shop but here we go there's a smoke coming out from Dolce Mania as he's looking to uh, to make a play on to these heroes in the mid lane. Flying Zebra will walk right on up the hill, right into Dolce Mania where he'll get stomped. And uh, now Dolce Mania is the one in trouble and there's no one coming to help him. He's just gonna go down. Uh, as DDX is just kind of sitting in the mid lane. Uh, Nidero is there as well, but they just look like they just wanted to secure the top rune, which they did. It was It's an invis and DDX will bottle that up. But unfortunately Dolce Mania just kind of left Left out to dry there. As he was making a rotation around, he saw the Witch Doctor coming up, and I think he just thought that the Queen of Pain was going to come over and try and help him out. Maybe uh, Nidera was going to come out as well. And fullback has found Jenkins, and Jenkins is going to try to escape going down through the river here, but he's going to walk right into the Ogre Magi, who won't be able to stun him up because of the battery assault. The that was actually weird how the Fire Blast looked there. But now Dolce Mania is going to try to chase down this clockwork and he should be able to get the stomp in just a second there there we go he's gonna get he does have double edge available to him but he's not gonna get the kill yet so he's trying to hold on to it but now he's gonna have to back away fire blast will come out onto clockwork and there we go ddx jumps up onto the high ground throws out the sonic wave hitting not just jenkins but shredder as well but it will cost him his life because he did blink into a little bit of a vulnerable situation now fullback's in trouble as well looks like he's going to go down will they be able to get a third as they're trying to chase down nidara they do still have the pull from shredder he will reality rift him back and this should be a dead ogre magic can he deny to the neutrals no he's not able to get there in time so Isaris. Going a little Dyer's bit deep there and getting completely punished by Leviathan. As, uh, well, Chaos Knight Wisp already showing their strength. And now, standing Dyer's in this mid lane, we'll get some TP support attack. from fullback, but immediately gets spot spotted out by the flare coming out from Jenkins. All while this is going on, Shibby's just been farming in the bottom lane. He's our top farmer right now at 49 and 16, now 50 and 16, now 52 and 16. Dyer's bottom tower but, uh, is under attack. Void, pretty much keeping pace with them. Just a little bit behind at 48 and 16. And now fullback trying to make a wrap around here onto Jenkins, who ooh, maybe he's pushed up a little bit far. As he will lay down the cogs, attack. but he is gonna get CC'd out. Papita jumping over the cogs with his time walk. He will throw Storm down the chrono force. as well. Double and uh, well placed there, making sure he doesn't accidentally catch full uh, fullback. But with Nusham TPing on in, he's going to keep Jenkins alive. The Wisp heals is too good. And now we are going to lose not just Dolce Mania, but also Fullback as well. Uh, we did lose Jenkins. But, uh, wow. Some good TP response there coming up from Leviathan. The Wisp already showing strength with that relocate. And now, Nusham and Shibby. Well, actually, no, they're not going to make a rotation away. It looks like they're going to stay up here with Jenkins. 
As uh, they look to maybe make make a play on to top. No, they're actually they are gonna make a rotation back down the mid. Where Shredder is just kinda taking taking a little bit of farm in the lane, but he is going up against DDX and soon some more heroes as Dolce Mania is there as well. But DDX is gonna TP up into the top lane where they're looking to get another kill onto Jenkins. They don't have Chrono available to him, but a nice time bash there coming up from Papita as long uh along with the sonic wave coming up from DDX gets them another kill onto Jenkins and that's the fourth death for Jenkins this game four of the five kills for Isaris have been on Jenkins so maybe he's just playing a little bit too aggressive in this off lane and Isaris sensing the fact that he's Radiance constantly out of position just attack. punishing him over and over Radiance and over again structures are fortified. however the fact that they're constantly responding and constantly uh, creating those kills or, or making those kills on the clockwork meant that they haven't really put uh, any pressure on some of the other heroes on the map. Shibby's been completely left alone. Uh, even Shredder, for the most part, has been left alone. Although he'll stun up DDX here and get some good damage in. Now, oh, no, never mind. We won't even have a Fire Blast from the Ogre. As he just kind of pops out of the jungle, comes down the ramp, shows his, uh, shows, I was going to say shows his face, but I guess shows his faces. And uh, just walks away. Jenkins, oh, he's so far up in this lane, now he'll get caught out again. As Pepita's going to right click him down, throws down the... Dyer's bottom tower is under uh oh, attack. now he's going to have to back away. He threw down the, uh, the Chronosphere, but with the relocate, he has to back away. And Pepita will go down. The hookshot came out, but it was way off the mark. Not catching fullback there. I don't think he had vision. In the meantime, Shibby in the bottom lane just dove and got a kill onto the Ogre Magi. Now DDX is going to be on him. It's going to be a little bit of a man fight. I think DDX is going to win this. Maybe. Yes, he will. There's uh, some good play there coming out from the Argentinian Queen of Pain. But Nusham has been on point with these relocates thus far. Uh, that relocate definitely saved uh, Jenkins there. As Jenkins once again was, I don't know if that was bait or, or maybe just getting caught out again. But Papita threw down the Chronosphere, and if he didn't get pushed by that, that Cogs, I think he would have been able to get the kill before New Sham's relocate came in on time. But uh, wasn't able to do so. The Cogs push was there. And DDX will come back in, throw it. A Shadow Strike off onto Shredder, but Shredder's not scared of anything. He's just going to come back in, re-engage onto the Ogre Magi, right-click him down. Shibby's going to jump on in with the Ball Lightning, getting the kill there. We had the Sonic Wave coming up from DDX, and now Dolce Mane comes in, and he just gets pulled by Shibby. It's going to be a double kill for Shibby. Now, look, he'll look to make it a third, and there we go. Triple kill for Shibby. A Storm Spirit starting to snowball out of control. 6-1-1 one, one so far. We got action in the top lanes. They try to put more pressure on the Pepita. As Leviathan Dyer's really upping the pace of this game with that Wisp. This time Pepita able to get on out of there. Didn't even have Chrono available to him. He will have that available in 20 seconds. But he just missed a kill in the mid lane as Shibby once again gets another. This time it's on fullback. To seventh kill of the game just 12 and a half minutes in. Switch on over to the net worth. You can see just how far ahead he is out of it over everyone else in this game. 7,500 net worth has fallen. under 13 minutes into the game. Here. DDX TPs to the top lane. Jenkins will just TP away. See, so he realized he wasn't going to be able to get on out of there. That unfortunately leaves Flying Zebra alone, but Flying Zebra jukes up into the trees and will TP away as well. Shibby now TPs on up here, and he's looking for a kill. He's going to jump right onto DDX. He has his orchid finish. And that should be a kill on the Queen of Pain. And he's going to get stunned out here by the Ogre. Never mind, Ball Lightning. Make sure that that uh, Fire Blast doesn't go off. But Shibby, eight kills now. Like I mentioned, that orchid, orchid already getting picked up. Jenkins, well, <laughs> he's not that close to anything like an orchid. He's uh, He's been struggling quite a bit. Papita, what has he gone? He's got a ring of health. 1,300 gold as well. I'm wondering what he's going to build that into. That it can't be a battle fairy, is it? Interesting. Either way, fullback's got his tranquils. Dolce Mania's got tranquils as well, and only 1,300 gold. He's uh, quite a ways away from his blink dagger compared to where you would expect him to be 14 minutes in. Uh, Nidara, struggling quite a bit as well. He's our lowest net worth in the game. 
DDX has been doing okay, electing to go with an Ogre Club first, maybe going after the BKB. As for Shredder, he went for the Hand of Midas, he has also picked up a Helm of Iron Will, probably going for an Armlet. New Sham, typical Wisp items with the Tranquil Bottle and Urn. And uh, that leaves Flying Zebra, who's got his Arcanes and a Magic Wand. We've got a grouping here from Isteris. But they're not going to smoke. Although they do have one on the center. They were ro rotating up to top and now they're going to rotate away. But Papita is going to get jumped on by Shibby. And now a relocate is going to come in as well. They've just lost their void. He wasn't able to get the Chronosphere off, as of course he was silenced by that Orchid. And Leviathan manages to claim the Tier 1 tower in the top lane as well while that was going on. DDX put a little bit of pressure on the mid-Tier 1 tower. But not able to stick around there for too long. And now we'll see the smoke come out. As uh, they're going to smoke and, and maybe make a rotation to the bottom lane. Maybe they're going to try to cut off Shredder here as he hops on into the jungle. Dyer's top tower and it looks like they're going to do just that. Shredder in a whole lot of trouble. He's going to desperately try to run back towards Nusham. The Stampede will come out. But they're just not able to get to him in time. Dyer's they really need that Blink Dagger up on the Centaur. Jenkins has TP'd on in. Will hook shot. But uh, he'll just actually disengage. Go back to his team. As now we've got the pull coming out from Shredder. That'll get the kill onto uh, full back and it'll also get them a kill onto the Ogre Magi. Shibby getting a kill onto Dolce Mania, who he did get on out of there early, but unfortunately he got out of there away from his team. And uh, Shibby just picking off the stragglers. As just like that, Leviathan gets three more kills as they're ahead 19 to 6. They're looking like they're in a pretty damn good spot to take this game. As they're over 12,000 gold ahead of Isaris, and we're only 16 minutes into this game. That's a quite substantial lead to have thus far. XP is over 10k as well, and with a kill on that tier 2 tower, it's going to be even further ahead. But DDX just got a kill on the Shibby. New Sham, however, got a kill on the Pepita, but we're going to lose New Sham, and now Shredder's going to try to get on out of there. He will try to TP away, but Dolce Mania is there in time with the Stomp, and we will lose the Chaos Knight as well. So three heroes go down for Leviathan. It seemed like just seconds ago, Leviathan just got a triple onto Isaris, but now Isaris getting a triple onto Leviathan. They did lose their Void. But uh, definitely a huge gold swing in their favor, and you can just see the comeback mechanics there. As uh, when you add the net worth of Storm into that equation, that means you're getting a lot of gold. That was almost 5,000 gold that went in favor of Isaris. They're going like, to look to make that a little bit more as Jenkins is going to get picked off, but Flying Zebra taking advantage of the fact that Dolce Mania was trapped in those cogs, laying down a death ward and getting a kill. Oh wow, that's that's really significant. With that kill onto the Storm Spirit fullback, able to buy a Blink Dagger. And it seemed like just a few seconds ago where both the supports and Isra's were really struggling for gold. Nidara still still struggling quite a bit, but um, he's still our net, our lowest net worth in the game by quite a substantial margin. But um, with that Blink Dagger purchase fullback getting right on back into the game. Take a look at DDX, see what kind of progression he's made. He still just has the Ogre Club, but he does have 2,600 gold on hand, which means he's about, um, well, just under 400 gold away from purchasing a BKB if he elects to go for that. Dolce Mania, he did die, so he did get set back a little bit, but he's got 2,000 gold, so 220 or 250 away from a Blink Dagger, and that would be absolutely huge for them. It's actually quite sad that uh, their support got a Blink Dagger before he did. That's definitely not the way that they'd want to distribute their uh, their gold if they, they had the option to. But that's what happens when you're when you're offlaner kind of struggling a little bit. Sometimes uh, sometimes he, he's just gonna not have that that Blink ta timing that you expect, and you just have to play around it. And Isaris has done so thus far. A little hook shot coming out from Jenkins. Didn't see it, but uh, either way, it was off the mark. As another pause will come out, as unfortunately we got a little bit of a ping spike, ping spike here, as a 1k MS 
says Nidara. It looks like uh, the lag issues have been resolved, so we've got a G from both players, and we're going to re resume this one. Pinta farming up in the mid lane. We haven't seen them really use Kronos offensively since the laning phase, as they've kind of always been on the back foot. And... Uh, it looks like Papita is going to be going for a Battle Furies. He's picked up a Perseverance and a Claymore. He's got 800 gold on hand, so very close to finishing the Battle Fury. But you have to say, it is quite late into the game. 19 and a half minutes so far, and still hasn't completed it. Ping's going out onto Shibby. I don't think they're going to be able to kill him. As, uh, they do almost have enough gold for their Centaur to get the Blink Dagger. And he'll double-edge those uh, those creeps. Of course, that doesn't break smoke. And uh, then he'll just get this uh, blank dagger. Now they'll be able to do something. Unfortunately, it was a little bit of a wasted smoke. They, uh, I think they were going for Shibby in the top lane, but he was he was backing before they even got there, so they weren't able to get there in time. But they are grouped up again. Dolce Mania, really the one who's buying smokes on this team. And it uh, looks like they're going to try and smoke up again and try and get something done with this newly acquired blink dagger for the centaur war runner oh, look at it. Well, we got pepita farming the bottom lane the battle fury is finished ddx has picked up a point booster and will now actually just finish his egg scepter so that's what the gold is for he wasn't going for a bkb it's kind of uh, unusual that you pick up the uh, the ogre club first rather than the point booster but I'm not sure when he picked that up. Maybe he picked it up um, when he was about to die, and he didn't. He would just kind of wanted to ma uh, min max or maximize the amount of gold uh, he would have a game, or, or I guess minimize the amount of gold that he'd be losing. As, uh, you always want to keep in mind uh, that reliable gold is a thing, and uh, if you're if you're going to be if you're going to be losing unreliable gold, it's better to, to kind of buy an item uh, before you die. However, you, you do want to typically not want to buy down through your reliable gold. This reliable gold is not gold that you're going to be losing, but you want to buy down to your reliable gold and uh, try to maximize your, your item purchases there. But sometimes, you know, you just have to, you have to spend a little bit of that reliable gold. But uh, when you're a support player, you definitely really need to maximize how you manage that reliable gold. And that's what allows you to pick up things like this Blink Dagger. Even though you're 2, 4, and 5 on the Lion, 11 CS, your team's not doing particularly well, you can still get item progression. And uh, that's something that you really notice with uh, some of these competitive support players. It looks like Lapid is going to get caught out here. Shibby jumps on him with that Orchid once again, silencing him out. He did have a stun come out from the Ogre, but he was quickly cleaned up. Now full back. He's not able to uh, escape as Jenkins jumped up past, laid down the cogs, so there was pretty much no escape for the Lion. And uh, Leviathan takes another three kill lead as they're now ahead 24 and 10. And definitely in the driver's seat in this one as they're ahead 12,000 gold with that. Uh, that pick off in the, in the jungle with the 5,000 gold swing. Uh, they have since made up for that. Incoming. Now they're going to look to, to pull ahead even further as they take this tier 2 tower. This first looks to put some pressure on this attack. bottom tier 1 as they haven't taken a single tower yet this game. And looks like Leviathan's not going to let them. As Shibby TPs to the bottom Dyer's tower and jumps on in onto DDX. But Dolce Mania is there with the Radiant stomp, and oh my goodness, just in time, Shibby's able to ball lightning away. The sonic wave doesn't land. Uh, that would have been a dead Shibby, I think. Dyer's top tower is under attack. I think he was only like 300, 400 HP. How much does uh, Sonic Wave do at level two? 450. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah, I believe that would have been a kill. Shibby just just barely getting away there. That was unreal. Well, we got another smoke from Isaris, but they won't be able to catch Shredder here or Nusham as they're going to get far enough away. If they have vision, they could jump with uh, the Centaur. 
But it doesn't look like they're going to find anyone. They will find Flying Zebra in the mid lane, though. As it almost looked like Leviathan knew what was going on, and then you see Flying Zebra up here, and it's like, oh, nope, they clearly didn't. As uh, Isterus finally make good on one of their smokes and uh, get a kill there. And how much is that? That's, that's not the biggest swing. A thousand gold goes their way, but... It'd be interesting to see what a kill on a Storm Spirit would do right now for their gold totals. I mean, even a kill on the Chaos Knight would be pretty gigantic. I don't, well, Shredder's not on a streak. I don't think... Shibi would be on... A, I think he's only on like a three kill streak right now. So it wouldn't be that big either. But, of course, the net worth difference um, would be absolutely gigantic in terms of uh, comeback gold that would be awarded to Isaris for getting the kill on him. We have a TP up to the top lane from Flying Zebra. So he's going to join up with Shibby. Who else do we have coming up here? Jenkins is coming up. We've got the Illusions. From Shibby, just kind of scouting out the spot, uh, the place. Dyer's but this Observer Ward for Isser is giving them attack. a lot of vision of these rotations coming out from Leviathan. That means no one's going to be caught out. And look at the sentries coming out from Isserus as they're desperately trying to take over control of the map and try and counter ward all these locations. But we've got some. Some pretty good ward placements, although this one I think was warded. I don't I'm not sure where it was warded. I believe it was warded from below. So they should know it's there. But they've got an observer ward there, and they're not warding the typical pillar ward. They ward it up here, which is a ward that gives you very similar knowledge about what's going on in the top lane, but uh, it is out of range of most uh, sentry ward locations for this pillar. Now uh, the one downside is it doesn't really give you information about this kind of rotation coming Dyer's up through top here tower is under attack but uh, if you want that you can use uh, other ward locations that wouldn't get I'll dig that. Uh, countered by the pillar uh, sentry anyways so you'll, you'll actually typically see sometimes players will place like a sentry down here and that's because they've got some way of getting vision up here but also they want to uh, potentially spot an observer ward out there or even below which will give them a little bit more vision uh, with regards to uh, rotations through uh, areas like that, or even from below coming up. Shibby with a long range ball lightning, but unfortunately he will be off the mark. He won't land that damage onto DDX, and he'll uh, well he'll have to back away, and he'll back away with the bottled and viz. But uh, yeah, with no mana, that's not really the scariest thing. So he'll just break that invis and bottle up. As he goes hunting for another kill, he's actually, he might just go to farm in this top lane. That could be bad. That could be real bad for him. As Pepita's off to the side, so is fullback in Dolce Mania. Shibby just delivered part of the components for his BKB, but still doesn't have that finish. As, oh, there was an observer. Oh, of course, the observer was just getting them out. And now Shibby jumping on in, gets the kill on a fullback. But Peter did throw down the chrono, and that stopped Shredder and Nusham from continuing to engage. Oh my! That just happened! They spotted out the centaur. <laughs> they spotted out the centaur. He hook shotted. So uh, Jenkins was down below. He hook shotted up. Right as the TP finished from the centaur, so he latched on. It Somehow it didn't interrupt the, the TP, and that meant that the centaur that had been TPing back brought Jenkins with him. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, the funny things that happen in Dota. But we're, uh, we don't have uh, long enough to think about that as DDX is getting initiated on by Shredder, but he will be able to blink away. Shibi, unfortunately, not enough mana to be able to jump in and get Dyer's that orchid off in time. Is under attack. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. But Leviathan will now take their last tier two tower of the game, and it's just Dyer's the tier threes left. Has fallen. Isra is still yet to take a single tower. Boom, They're behind over fifteen thousand gold. 
net worth or uh, XP is about 15,000 gold as well. And Leviathan, not really scared to take this high ground when you've got a million cent or uh, chaos knights as they just pop a whole bunch of illusions and just go up there, take the tier three tower down. They got a nice earth spike coming up from fullback, but it does just hit all the illusions. Doesn't actually hit the real chaos knight. And there we go, melee racks down. And Isaris, they almost had no way to engage there. They didn't have Chrono. How were they going to take that fight? In turn, they couldn't. They just had to sacrifice their uh, their mid uh, racks. Pepita got a little bit of farm in the Radiant Jungle, which was probably the safest part on the map at that point. And uh, now with Chrono up, they do have the potential to do something, but it was a little too late. Jenkins will come down here and farm. Don't think he knows that uh, Dolce Mania is just kind of hanging off to the side there. He will blink up into the trees to uh, try and keep himself alive. As Shibby's maybe gone a little bit too far up here, so he's getting caught out, and they will get the kill there. Adara will get the kill. We had the sonic wave coming out from the Queen of Pain, and look at that gold swing. Holy moly. 2,400 gold for one kill. Whew. Oh my god, we've got a triple bracer build on the Ogre Magi, just trying to stay alive. It's a tough game. Tough game. Actually, we haven't gone over the items in quite some time, so we'll bring it up so you can see everyone's. As we've got uh, an Egg Scepter up on the Witch Doctor. So Flying Zebra looking to uh, get those big death wards off, off trying to, to match what Demon was able to do earlier on in the night. Shivy. It's going absolutely insane. Did lose quite a bit of uh, Bloodstone charges there. But uh, he's still at 8. He's got his BKB and an Orchid. New Shamp's still just your typical with support item. He's got an Ogre Club and Stash. Oh, sorry, that's not him. That's Jenkins. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Jenkins does have an Ogre Club and Stash, which is working towards building an Egg Scepter. He's already got his Force Staff. And now Jenkins just... Uh, once again, with this... In, with these Invisra... Viz runes. He almost got spotted out as they dropped the sentry ward. But Isaris looks like they're going to have to uh, surrender to this Roche. And bring up the... the oh, no. Never mind. They may look to re-engage. As uh, they stop to kill a sentry. And uh, the Aegis will go in the hands of Shibi as he immediately looks to use it. As he jumps on into the enemy team, that gets them a kill onto the centaur war runner. That's a solo kill on the Centaur War Runner in the middle of basically everyone. Jenkins, fortunately, misses both heroes with the hook shot. So they only get the one kill, but with that kill on the Centaur, they may look to push up into the high ground with, the, of course, that Aegis still on the Storm Spirit. There is a buyback available, so Dolce Mania could, uh, could spend the gold to, to rejoin his team here. But he will be up in 15 seconds. They may be able to stall long enough so that he doesn't actually have to use that buyback. But Shibby's gonna jump on in, get the pull off onto fallback, and they get another kill to start everything off. Now they got the centaur rejoining, but they've lost their lion. Now they've also lost their tier 3, as now they're gonna start swinging away at the melee. Nidara's gonna come in, try to get the stun off on a Shibby, but he just ball lightnings away. And will we lose the melee racks? Uh, not looking like it. As the illusions for uh, Chaos Knight have gone down. Shibby maybe uh, living a little dangerously there as uh, Chronosphere was available. He did of course have uh, his teammates behind him. And that Radiant's might have been a little attack. bit difficult for uh, the uh, Papita's teammates on Isaris to be able to interrupt anything that would come out from uh, the supports Radiant's kind of on the other side of the Chronosphere. Attack. But Nidara getting caught out here. Shredder looking to finish off that kill, but not able to do so. He's going to try to run away. Shibby's going to jump on in. He'll get the kill instead. But he nearly gets hexed up, but able to pop that BKB. And now he's there right-clicking down Pepita. As Pepita will throw down the Chronosphere, catching two. But Dolce Mania is going to be the one who's going to go down. Pepita now jumping after Shibby with a couple bash procs. Locks him down in place, but Pepita unfortunately not able to get the kill. Shibby... And Jenkins will combine for that. GG, GG. Good game, well played. Will come out from everyone on Isaris and uh, Leviathan. Two and one in the group. Unfortunately, Isaris 
Not able to, uh, to take a game yet. We will see them play two more times tomorrow night. But that's going to be it for Leviathan. They, they finished two and one. So now it's just a matter of, well, what are, what are the other teams able to do? We've already got uh, Summoner's Rift at two and oh. So they have to play a game against Isaris. So if they lose to Isaris, then we've got a tie between Summoner's Rift and Leviathan. And Isaris will also play Pain Gaming, who's, uh, unfortunately, they're 0 and 2 right now. So they have, well, they've got no way of advancing. So Isaris can actually, Isaris could potentially win both their games tomorrow, and then we have a three-way tie. And uh, that means Pain Gaming would, be, would finish last in the group. And uh, Isaris, Leviathan, and Summoner's Rift would have a, a playoff against each other to uh, determine who would, uh, well, who the top two are going to be to advance. But we can't get ahead of ourselves. Isaris would still have to, uh, to beat Summoner's Rift to allow that to happen. And uh, that's the game that's going to be probably the most important. And I believe that's our first one of the night tomorrow. As a... Uh, no, that's actually our second game. We start with Pain Gaming versus Isaris at 8.30 Eastern. And then Summoner's Rift play Isaris at uh, 10 o'clock. Well, hopefully you'll come back and join us for that. Once again, I'm Niz. You're watching NizCast. Make sure you hit that follow button on Twitch. Um, besides that, you can also follow me on Twitter at NizCast. And uh, I'm going to upload all the VODs from tonight. Um, onto my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NizCast. You can go back and check those out. Link them to a friend. Just do whatever you want to do with them. But uh, they're going to be there and available to you. Um, but they won't be up till probably about sometime tomorrow morning. So uh, don't go checking them now. I've got to upload them. But they will be up by, uh, by tomorrow. So uh, hopefully you did enjoy the games tonight. Hopefully you'll, you'll come back and enjoy the games tomorrow. We do just have two games tomorrow. But uh, then the next day, Following that, and for several days to come after that, we're going to have three games a night as we move on through Group B, C, and D, and then we're going to have a small break, a couple days, and then we start the playoffs. But yeah, like I said, that's going to be the end of it, for, uh, end of uh, the Dota 2 Canada Cup tonight, and that's going to be it for me tonight. So hopefully you guys will, uh, will have a great night, and hopefully you'll come back. Have a good one, guys.